the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you guys for coming today. I asked you all to give me your name and your hobbies. And today we're talking about stress and families. And the first thing that I did for you guys to add a bit of stress, what did I do? I took away your cell phone. And from that point on, I think most of you don't like me. And if the phones are right here on the table. I haven't moved them. They're all going to come back to you. Don't worry. But we talked about how this phone has power over each one of us. And in order for us to have power over the phone, what are we going to do? Turn it off. Turn it off. Three words. Because we said, if you cannot turn off the phone, then the phone has power over you. So when you go home, you're going to get your phone back. Don't worry. I want you to test it by yourself. Say, can I turn off the phone for half an hour? If you do half an hour, say, can I turn off the phone for a full hour? And you're testing how much power you have over the phone. Can I turn off the phone for four hours, for a whole day? Do you know that for this convention, for this convention, the family convention that we're starting right now, do you know what I asked all the parents to do? Guess what? Turn it off. I told the parents, if you want to spend time with your kids and, you, and have fun, turn off your phones. I'm asking you now to do the same thing with your parents. To turn off the phone so you could enjoy your family. Each one of you told me about a hobby that is very good hobbies. Basketball, piano, uh, volleyball, reading. I want you, when you go home, to turn it off and focus on these good, great hobbies that you could be doing, okay? Just a second. Yes, sir, do you want, do you want something? What was... Okay, no problem. Sharif, no problem. So, we're gonna, what are we going to do? We're going to turn it off and test yourself, okay? Those of you that know me or those of you that come to the church, come and tell me how long were you able to turn it off. Test yourself. It's okay. Turn it off for 15 minutes. Turn it off for half an hour. Turn it off for an hour. This is your ability to have power over your phone. Does that make sense? You had a question, Marina? You're good? Okay, yes, sir. You had a question. Uh, I have a suggestion for you. Sure. Why can't you, keep, why can't you take all the phones to your room and then tomorrow you give the phones back? Oh, that's a good suggestion. Do you think they're going to like you very much if no, I take all their phones? No, no. <laughs> yes. Uh, we could try it. So we have this session for the next five minutes. Okay. We're going to finish quickly and I'm going to leave. The, I'm not going to touch the phones again. Okay. I'm going to leave the phones here and I want you to test your willpower. You understand what willpower is? Thank you for taking my suggestion. Thank you very much, sir. Do you know what willpower is? Willpower is like when I take you and you're extremely hungry in the morning, okay, and I put the juiciest burger in front of you or the juiciest meal in front of you that you love, whatever you love. You're extremely hungry in the morning and I put a, a yummy, yummy food in front of you and tell you, don't touch it. Don't touch it. When I say that and you're allowed and you're, you're willing to sit in front of that meal and not to eat it until I tell you go ahead and touch it, that's testing your willpower. So we're going to test your willpower with cell phones. Okay? They're right in front of you. I'm not taking any of them. You have to test your own willpower to see how long you're going to be able to wait to take your cell phone once I'm done. The first person that takes their phone has no willpower. You have to have strong will. A strong will will be able, will make you resist the devil. Okay, because that's the whole point. Why are we doing fasting and everything? Is to train and to discipline our bodies to have strong will to do God's will, not our will. Yes. What if someone forces you not to do something, and, but you don't care about it? If someone forces you to not do something. Would you like to elaborate? Because it's very generic. Like, Give me a scenario. If your mom Hopefully it has something to do with cell phones. Okay. If your mom took away your cell phone because you were bothering your sister. Yes. And 
she just didn't like that. And yes. You don't care about your cell phone, but you're but you want and you want to tell your mom that. But then again, you don't want. It. Well, first of all, you shouldn't be bothering your sister. <laughs> Let's get to the basics. I think your mom might be taking away his cell phone because she might think that you're attached to it and it's a privilege that you have. So she's trying to say to you that that privilege that you have, I'm going to take it away because you're not honoring and respecting me in the house and you're not respecting your sister. Right? This, by the way, this, by the way, we said it's what? It's an object. Okay, and this, by the way, is a privilege. It's not a necessity of life. Do you know what that necessity of life means? What's a necessity of life? That's right. What's a necessity of life? Give me an example of a necessity of life. Food. Water. Shelter. Oxygen. These are necessities. These are necessities of life. This... Soda. Not soda. <laughs> Soda is not a necessity of life. It's a privilege. <laughs> this, to put it in its right place, this is an object that's given to you by your parents as a privilege. This is not a necessity. You don't grow up having cell phones. Okay? Thank you. Okay? He doesn't have a cell phone for a reason. Okay? Because I did not give him a cell phone. <laughs> He's my son, that's why. Okay, so this object, you have to put it in the right place. Do you know what the right place of a cell phone is? Right beside the chair that I had here. Okay, there was a chair that I had right here, right? Remember when I put a chair right in the middle? Uh, I put a chair right in the middle and said, this is an object? This is another object. It has no authority over you. This cell phone has no power over you. You're letting it have power over you. Okay? Just like a chair does not have power over you. But someone could come and worship the chair. Sure. Wouldn't that be funny? Excuse me, Justice, for a second. If I put the chair right in the middle, I say to you, worship that chair. No. You're going to say no. But do you know what you're doing? What, do you know what you're doing? I'm putting the cell phone now, and you are worshiping it. You couldn't resist me taking it away for a few minutes. You were attached to do it. Just like Jesus is saying to us, abide in me and I in you. The cell phone, you're abiding in the cell phone. You're saying, no, thank you very much, Jesus. I'm going to abide in that cell phone. I'm going to hold on to that cell phone. I'm never going to let it go. So you are worshipping it. It might not appear as if you're worshipping it physically, <laughs> but everything else that you're doing... Everything else that you're doing, you're worshipping it. So we're going to finish now, quickly. I'm going to ask if you have any questions or answers. And I'm going to leave the cell phones. And I'm, I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to judge anybody. You judge yourself. How long can I resist not taking my own cell phone? Okay? Any questions or answers? Or any questions and I'll try to find answers. Can you have your phone back after everything I said? I didn't take it. It's right there in front of you. Any questions before we conclude the session? Everybody's looking at their cell phone. Everything that I just said is gone from one ear to the next ear. If it's that much, I have no, I have no issue to take all your cell phones and walk away. I have no issues. I have Sayyidna here. He's fully supportive of my decision. I could take all these cell phones. I just walked away. You have a cell phone? Yes. You're not allowed to ask me a question before you put the cell phone here. No need for the question. See? <laughs> Who has higher power? The cell phone. The cell phone. Oh, uh -huh. if you have higher power, put it. Break, take it out. Give it. Give it. Mama, ma telash ala mama. Telash ala mama. Thank you. Most of the time, most of the time, your parents trying to get a hold of you. If they know that you're a, in a convention, they're not worried about you. What, what's your question? Now you can ask me a question. Okay. My opinion, I think the right way should be if you take away the phone, you substitute it with something. So yeah. since that takes up most of your time, Great. Make, get a hobby, play basketball. That's what I said. Hang out with friends. You like came that. late. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. No, because most parents and most people don't like because of the Egyptian mentality, they take away their phones. Like, they don't substitute <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's exactly what I said, sir. I like you just came late. The first thing that I did while you weren't here, I asked everyone for their name and their favorite hobby. And I said, 
take that away and replace it with a good hobby. And some people said, reduce the amount of time and actually spend time with God. Hey, very good. You're still not going to get your phone back. It's still right here. Okay, so yes, you have to, anytime you let go of something, you have to replace it with something. But replace it with something that's good, replace it with a good hobby, replace it with spending time with God, replace it with spending time at church, partaking in the sacraments, abiding in God, not in a cell phone. Isn't when taking something technically, um, like as if you want to put something somewhere, it's like you're um, stealing or something when you're taking something? What do you mean? Like, <laughs> you I, you, you think I'm stealing your cell phone? <laughs> it's right here. It's right in front of you. But when you're, like, your I mom, didn't take it away, guys. <laughs> you're I'm not even borrowing it. It's on a table in front of you. When your parents take away your You all gave it to me, exactly. When your parents take away the phone, they take it and they hide it it's somewhere. It's a privilege. Oh, it's amazing. a privilege. It's not a necessity. Okay? It's like I give you a car, you're my daughter, you give you a car, and then say, I decide to take that car away from you. It's a privilege. Oh, come on. It's okay, don't worry about it. Okay, next next question. I'm going to spend like half of my time turning off phones. Yes. What if you like you use a computer? Can you raise your voice, please? What if you use a computer Shh. or a phone like yes. a lot, but you use it for a good reason, but then you get addicted to it by using it for a like, good reason? That's like strong. I need to do my, I need to study on it because I don't have books. <coughs> Can you turn it off for a whole day and not touch it? Yes. Can you turn it off for a whole week and not touch it? Yes. Okay, then you have power over it. Anytime you're not sure about something, anytime you're not sure about it, Go, go away from it for a long time and see how you feel about it, right? That's why the church, guys, that's why the church is disciplining us through fasting. The church is taking away a necessity, which is food, not a cell phone. You're saying you are not allowed to eat no, for a period of time. Soda. You're not allowed to eat for a period of time or you're not allowed to eat that type of food. All of this so you can be disciplined and have willpower. Because if you can do it over a necessity, you should be able to do it over an object, right? So anything, cell phone, Facebook, computer, anything, whatever it is. If you have power over it and you could step away from it for a long time, then you have power over it. But if you can't resist the fact that I took it from here and to here and you're eyeing it all this time and you're not even listening to half the stuff that I'm saying, that it, has, that it definitely has power over you. Yes, there's another question. Why could why could Because it has power over you. You're supposed to resist anything that has power over you. The only thing that's allowed to have power over you is God. You're supposed to resist everything that has power over you except God. Does that make sense? So anything that has power, this has power over you. And I just proved it to you. I just took away your phone for five minutes. And you, you, first of all, you didn't want to give me your phone. Even though you know I'm a priest, I'm not going to steal it. Right? I'm not running away from it or from you. I just said, like, give me your phone. I'm going to put it here for just a few minutes. So that means it has power over you. Uh, yes, sir. School, school hmm. uh, has power over me. Does that mean I need to Give me an example. It? How does school have has power over you? Like, I can't go, I can't, like, go without it because then I get in trouble. No, you could go away. No, you could, ha you could live life without school. But school is, a, is something that's educational, that's beneficial for you. Okay. That's going to make you a better person so we could actually, when you get older, you could have a decent job and live a good life. So school in itself is good. It should not have power over you. It should not be an addiction. Okay? But you should go to school. I don't want everyone to leave and say, Abuna said you should not go to school. You should go to school. Okay? And you should do very well in school. You should be honest with what God has given you. Right now, you are in grade eight or seven or whatever it is, you should be honest with that grade. You should do the best that you can for that time that you have. Okay. Okay? Next question. I'm going to do like, uh, they're all black, so I don't know how you guys what are going to find What if you have out. like so much studying and sports to do that you just like forget about like spending time with God? Like, no, well, God comes first. Yeah, but like let's say like school, you have like no, God comes studying first. to the point. No, God comes first. So it won't matter if you just do bad? La Did I say that? <laughs> Did I say that? I said put God first. When you wake up in the morning, you pray to God. When you're about to study, you pray to God. 
put God first. That doesn't mean that you don't do your homework because God is first. I didn't say that God is going to take 24 hours of your time. Put God first and everything else will fall in place. When we fast, we like attempt to like get away from a necessity and not a privilege. Because it's, it's teaching you to have willpower over something that you really need to have in your life. Because if you have willpower over something, it's something that's really important, then by default, you should have over, uh, power over trivial things or things that are not important, that are nece not necessity. If you can put yourself in check and not eat meat for like 40 days, that's, that's a lot of willpower. No, like five days. Or like five days. It depends on your whatever. But then when I take away your cell phone, you should not be like scared, right? Yes, sir. Um... So, I'll give everyone an example of how... Do you have a question? No. Okay. But I'll give everyone an example of how some uh, very, very few people uh, can do that. Like the monks. They, like, actually they don't have a phone. Only like Sayyidina. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. So a good example of how you should have willpower is... Uh, our monks, when they go and leave everything behind, the whole world behind, so they could overcome the world, okay? And then they could overcome everything that's, that's pulling them down, so they could be more like angels on earth. Yes, one last question. I think and then we're going to stop. Oh, we have two more questions, sorry. Would sin be a necessity or a privilege? Sin is neither a privilege nor a necessity. You get addicted to sin, you sin a lot. Sin is a spiritual death. Sin is a spiritual death. You've died. Spiritually. Okay? It's not a necessity and it's not a privilege. It's something, it's darkness, it's everything away from God. That's sin. Of course you could be addicted to sin. Of course. Just like you're addicted to a cell phone. But sin is a spiritual death at the end of the day, okay? Sin is basically you're saying, I choose to be away from God. I choose to be away from God. I choose death. I choose darkness. That's what sin is. So all we try to do is say, whenever you fall into sin, get up quickly, repent, confess, go to Abuna, so you could overcome sin so it does not become addictive. Because repentance is resurrection from death, is your second baptism, is going back to like, is reconciliation with God, saying, I'm sorry. Every time you sin, you get up and say, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise again. Remember that verse, guys. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. I shall rise again, okay? I have a question. Sorry, no, you, you're first. Sorry. Oh. If we like overpower the phone and like we go to our hobby which like drawing, can't you be like can't drawing overpower you then? Yeah, you don't want it to overpower you. Nothing should ever overpower you. Even good hobbies should not overpower you. You should be able to walk away from it whenever you want. You choose to do certain things at a specific time after you've done your prayers and after you've done putting God first and you're putting it in the right spot in your day. So you're not, you're not being consumed by it. Okay? You're in charge. God has given you the authority, tread on serpents, and scorpions, and every power of the enemy. Okay? Okay, one last question, then we're done. Sebastian. Um, when you say that, like, when, when, you, when you sin and you repent, Yes. Uh, it's a re resurrection. Yes. Um, but I... It's a resurrection from only one sin, not the whole, ev That's every, right. every other sin. That's so, right. So, like, so... You're not fully resurrected yet. You haven't died and fully resurrected. But that specific sin, every time you repent, as if you died in sin, and you resurrected with Christ by repentance. By for that, that one... For, for that sin. For that one sin. Not forever, just one sin. Okay. Okay? Any last questions? Okay, so to conclude... 
Turn it off. Okay? Turn off your cell phones. If you have the ability to turn off the cell phone, then it does not have any power over you. If you cannot turn off the phone, then it has power over you. This is a distraction. The cell phones are distractions and a privilege. Use it wisely because otherwise you are worshipping your own cell phone. Today's exercise is turn it off. See how long you could stay away from the phone before you turn it back on. And each one of you, I'm going to ask each one of you, each one of you will come to me and tell me how long were you able to resist turning on the phone. Okay? So we're going to turn off the phone. Sorry? No, we're going to all turn off the phone. I'm going to come take the phone. Come take the phone. Turn it off right now. And you turn it on whenever you want. But come and tell me. Abuna, I was able to turn it on after half an hour. After an hour. After two days. After two minutes. Whatever. Test it. Okay? That's your exercise. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.